Hi friends, welcome back. I hope you've had a good week. And if you're new, hello, my name's Tracy and welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. This week, it's another flip from my recent auction haul. So let's just jump straight in. This bedside table nightstand was in a lot that I paid £25 for and there were five items, so it's £5 which is a bargain price because it's actually a really solidly built piece. Had a terrible paint job at some point in time, but that can be easily rectified. Somebody obviously got tired of orange pine and decided to give it a quick lick of paint. Now, the original handles seem to have been taken off. You can see here where the holes were, but none of that is a problem for the effect that I'm going to do on it today. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all those overspill marks, all the areas that have got paint on that I don't want to see paint, and obviously give it a really good clean, but I'm not going to sand the whole piece. And you'll see why later. Let's get started. So that's the prep done and now on to the fun bit. So for a project like this, it's a great way to use up old paint, paint that I've previously mixed and paint that I just don't like the colour of anymore. I've gone right off Paris Grey, but I can use it as a base by mixing it with other shades and then adding a bit of a twist. Oh, I love my wall filler. This is a super easy way to create texture in paint and create a really unique finish. There are lots of different mediums on the market that you can add to paint, but they're actually really quite expensive. And this is not. It's a super cheap way of creating a stunning effect. Now this Paris Grey has been sat in the garage for a long, long time, and you can see it's completely separated. So this is going to need a massive stir, but I would say whenever you're going to use any paint, never mind just chalk paint, you really need to stir, stir, stir before you start painting. And don't be tempted to be dipping your screwdriver in there to stir it. That is not going to do the job. You really need a stirring stick, wooden or plastic, with a flat bottom as well that will help lift up all those solids. So now I've got everything thoroughly stirred, I'm going to start mixing things together. So I've got the leftover paint that I'd mixed before. I actually mixed that for the chair makeover, the tub chair makeover that I did. So be sure to check out that video. Using some of the Paris Grey and then, oh, on fleur. I am in love with this colour. Doesn't that look like melted chocolate? Now the colour I'm mixing here is actually going to be a base colour and so you're not going to see a huge amount of it and the tones are going to change as we go through this process. So the next thing to add is the magic ingredient, the easy fill. This powder you use for junk compound, uh, filling holes in walls. I did rookie error here use a too small a vessel, so I've had to decant some of it into another tub. I just got a little bit overexcited, I think, because I love doing this. I'm using an old paintbrush just to roughly mix the ingredients together, so I don't want it super smooth like a batter. Then using the same brush, I'm going to start applying the mixture. So I use lots of different strokes to get it on there. Uh, lots of dibs and dabs and blobbing it on. We're really loading up, creating texture, covering all of this old cream paint. The reason I didn't sand the old paint off was simply because I didn't need to. The chalk paint and the wall filler are really adhesive, so they will stick pretty much to any surface making this a great project for those of you that don't want to be stripping pieces all the way back. This technique also suits leaving the handles on, so one less job to do.
that's everywhere covered that I want covered. And you can see as I give you some close-ups here, the texture that's created by this effect. This is exactly how I want it to look at this stage, but it's not going to look like this when we're finished. So stay with me on this. After a quick cleanup, I'm leaving everything to dry overnight. And now we're ready to start the next stage. I'm going with old white chalk paint and a large chalk paint brush. It just makes the job much faster. Now, please don't think that this is just another piece of white painted furniture. It's not going to be white when it's finished. We're going to go on to the next stage now. And that's going to be sanding. Now, I am going to let the machine take a lot of the work, but I've only got 180. You could probably do something slightly finer. I'm going to use some hand sanding and these sanding sponges are really useful as well. So nice and easy, not too much pressure. The whole idea here is to be knocking off those lumps and creating a relatively smooth surface. As the raised areas are reduced, you start to see that undercolour coming through. And an optional extra here is if you want a more distressed look, you can put a little bit more pressure on the corners on the detail to get the bare wood coming through, but it really doesn't need it. At this stage, I just like to double check that the drawers are still fitting in case they need more sanding. The sky has suddenly gone very dark and I think rain is about to stop play. Oh yes, here we go. The joys of the English weather in the summer. Shower over, play can recommence. Now I'm back out with the old white and I'm going to make a wash. I'm mixing just a little bit of paint with water, which I'm going to apply to the back of the unit the sides and the inside of the drawers, just to give it that professional finish. Once all that is dry and the wash doesn't take long to dry, it's time to wax. I'm going to start by covering everything that I've painted in a clear wax to seal and protect the piece. I'm using a large Annie Sloan wax brush and it's a new one. Always excited to get a new brush. 
One thing I would say is when you get new brushes, always wash them out in warm soapy water first to remove any loose bristles. When you use clear wax as a sealant, it's always best to leave it for 30 days to allow it to fully cure. It will then provide a very hard protective barrier for your paintwork and it will last for years. Once the piece is covered, I could actually just leave it like this, but that's not me. I do like to push the envelope slightly. So before that clear wax goes off, before it starts to dry, I am going to come in with my decorative wax. And in this situation, my decorative wax is going to be the dark wax. And I'm using another waxing brush to put the dark on and also a much smaller detail brush to get in around those handles. If you find that your wax is quite hard and not so easy to work with, it could have been left outside in the garage, it could be that the temperature is really quite cool, don't be afraid to actually take some out and warm it up in the microwave or quite often what I do when I'm out in the garage, I just get the heat gun very gently on it just to loosen it up and it makes it much easier to play around with. Just to clarify that point, when I say put it in the microwave, I don't mean put the tin in the microwave, just take them out and put it into a plastic pot. Now at this stage of the process, you can go as wild as you want to. If you want just a subtle color change, use a little bit, take it off with a rag, use your clear almost as an eraser. I'm not very good at subtle, so this is the effect I've gone for. And you can see here the difference that the wax makes. Now I'm just gonna leave this overnight and a quick reminder of what we started with. Desperate need of some love and attention. And I think we can say it's had that. I hope that's given you lots of inspiration. Let me know in the comments below. Do check out these two videos to see the auction haul and to see another technique using wall filler. There's lots more makeovers to come soon, so if you're not subscribed already, please do. Turn on notifications because I don't always post on the same day. And do share this video with your friends if you think somebody would benefit from it. Thanks for watching and I hope you join me next week.